Miss Friedman, Peter Kinski. Yes, how are you today? Y yes, it is, but not as lovely as you are. <laughs> Don't ever lose that laugh, Miss Friedman. Uh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm calling about my visa. Is there any way that we can appeal their decision? Uh, no, my job at the university ends in three weeks, then I must leave the country. Uh, no, well, I have work that I want to finish here. You don't understand. I, I have no wish to return at all. Do I have any other options? Well, at present, I was not thinking in that direction. Yes, I see. I'm sorry, too. Thank you, Miss Friedman, for your time. Goodbye. Your friend was not very much help. There are other ways. There are other people. I don't need other lawyers, Judith. I need a visa. She did tell me of one other possibility. Oh? She said that if I were to marry an American, I could stay in this country. Oh. Would you marry me, Judy? Darling, I would do anything for you. I would say yes. But I can't give up the alimony. Go, Anya. I would never ask you to do that. Anyway, as my uh, ex-husband would tell you, living with me is a lot worse than living in Poland. <laughs> So now, at the end of the year, we should step back and see how all of this relates to our lives today. In a way, it is ironic that I am teaching a class about Russian icons in an age where symbols seem to have lost their meaning. This, to me, is the quintessential example of the continuing malaise that plagues modern America. That seems like a direct contradiction to what you said two weeks ago, which was, and I quote this. Wait a minute, that's not it. Just a minute, I, I want to get this right. The gist, Mrs. Sullivan, the gist will do. Well, about, about two weeks ago, you said that America today is richer in imagery than any other culture in history. I mean, isn't that just then a question of personal taste? My personal taste is never in question. <laughs> However, I will concede your point, Miss Sullivan. Well, uh, let us stop here. We'll conclude next week. Remember, your papers are due to me on Monday. No exceptions. Excuse me, Professor. Can I talk to you about my paper? Tell you the truth, Mrs. Sullivan, it's been a bad day. Oh, I'm sorry, but I really do have to talk to you. You see, I have a faculty meeting this afternoon. I just know it, but, but there's something that's blocking me. And how can I help you? Well, I'm doing a paper on the differences between Larionov and Goncharova. Well, naturally, I found all the obvious ones, but Don't I was hoping... Don't worry, Mrs. Sullivan. I'm sure your paper will be just fine. Oh, thank you. It's uh, Miss Sullivan. Uh, miss, I'm divorced now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Miss Sullivan. Mm. Have you ever had that gut feeling that tells you that a whole new avenue is about to explode right in front of you? Well, that's what's happening here. I mean, I get so excited when I think... Miss Sullivan... I'm sorry, could you excuse me for just one moment? I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Sure.
Peter. Is the faculty meeting still on for this afternoon? Yes, it is. Would you give the others my apology? I think I'm going to have to miss this one. Thank you for oh. waiting, Mrs. Sullivan. Um, we're in luck. My meeting has been canceled, uh, so I have to catch a bus. But if you want to walk along with me, we could continue our discussion. Sure. Um, wait a minute, why don't I give you a lift? Oh, I'm sure it would be out of your way. Oh, no, it's no trouble at all. You know, I came back to school so I could support myself really well eventually. And this class was just another humanities requirement at first, but it has turned out to be by far the most inspiring. You are a wonderful teacher. That's a nice compliment. You know, sometimes, though, I feel so much older around the other students. Don't be fooled by you. One of the joys of maturity is being able to take full advantage of what is offered to you. You know, the rumors fly pretty fast around you. They say that you're nobility. Is that true? I was due to be a count. <laughs> due to be a count? Uh, the world changed just before I was born. After the Second World War, there was no aristocracy left in Poland. Well, almost a count is good enough for me. We made a good time. Yes, the lights were with us. I enjoyed our conversation. Oh, me too. I wish I hadn't waited till the end of the term to speak with you. Anyway, I'll see you in class Monday. Well, I'm free after class if you want to talk to me then. Yes, I'd like that very much. Till Monday, then. Till Monday. Smite me with wisdom. I'm a little late for class. Miss Sullivan, you're soaked. Well, my, my car broke down this morning. I got it fixed, and now my top won't go up. And <laughs> Please, come in and have some tea. No, no, I couldn't. I just wanted to make sure that you got my term paper. Well, just until the rain subsides. No, really, and I'm sorry I had to have bothered How do you home. take it? Cream? Come <laughs> Milk. in, sit down. I'll get you a cup. Here. Oh, thank you. Oh. Now, I'm really mad that I didn't make the last day of class. Yes, you would have missed. Some of the students brought wine and cheese. We have a little party. You must be relieved that school is over. No. Actually, I have enjoyed my stay here. America has been most accommodating. Can't you stay and teach some more? Well, I would like to very much. But my visa is up at the end of the month, and then I return to Poland. Is this a picture of your father? No, that is my grandfather. He's very striking. Is your family still in Poland? Uh, no, I lost my family after the war. What's that you're working on over there, a book? That is a piece that is destined to remain unfinished. But this is in English. Well, it's a project that I could not work on in Poland. Please, sit down. That sounds like Solzhenitsyn. Did you have to escape, like from a, a prison camp or something? Well, the only prisons that I had to escape from was a series of boarding schools I was raised in. 
My mother and father were dead before I was ten. I was raised by my aunt and uncle. And you've never been married? No. I was in love once. After the war, my family lost all their land and money, but my aunt and uncle never lost their aristocratic principles. They did not approve of the girl or of her family, I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry, too. <laughs> I am such a classic case. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I put Larry through dental school, and then after he became successful, all of a sudden, it wasn't his words, just time to move on. So after I put myself back together, I decided to go back to school, finish my degree, and get on with my life. You love this man a great deal. I think I was in love with the idea of marriage. Anyway, he was uh, doing a number on me, so. Doing a number? <laughs> I just used to blame him for a lot, that's all. Oh my God, it's, uh, it's 10 o'clock. That's all right. You can stay for a while. I go to bed quite late. I'd really like to, but I have got to get back home. Professor, this has been a wonderful evening. Thank you. It was my pleasure. And please, call me Peter. Peter, may I read your manuscript? While you read my paper? to have dinner with me sometime. I know a wonderful little bistro called Le Cuckoo. Le Cuckoo? <laughs> Sounds like a pet shop. <laughs> yes, I'd love to. Tomorrow night, then. Tomorrow, huh? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Oh, geez. <laughs> She's divorced. She's older than the other students. She's also quite bright. Oh, Peter, you're joking. Judith, stop laughing. I'm serious. <laughs> this is hysterical. Do you really think you can get this co-ed to, to up and marry you in what, less than a month? What are you going to use, Polish hypnosis? You don't understand. I have no choice. I have no other choice. She doesn't marry me, I go back. I'm sorry. That wasn't nice. Will you forgive me? Yes. Kohanya, do you think it's so wrong what I'm doing? You do what you have to do, Peter. I'm your friend, not your conscience. I think it'll help take the jag. Peter, come in. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, make yourself at home. I'm just finishing up a phone call. Of course. And there's absolutely no way you can make it tonight. No. The last time Linda was here, she left the house in an awful mess. Kelly, can you think of anyone else who might be free? Mom, I need my yellow socks. I have a quick confession to make. Those yellow socks with the light bulbs. Where are they? Kelly, let me call you right back. Uh, Melissa, this is Professor Kinski from school. Mine or yours? Mine. Professor, this is my daughter, Melissa. I'm pleased to meet you. Hi. Mom, you were right here. Melissa? <sighs> Melissa was supposed to spend the night at a friend's house, and the friend got sick, and I am going nuts trying to find a sitter at the last minute. I've never left her alone at night. Maybe we should just make it another time. Well, there is a very simple solution. 
Would you care to join us? We would love to. What does one say to an 11-year-old child? We ended up talking about eating in restaurants and my escargot. <laughs> That's bizarre. That's what we talk about. Things are not going at all the way I planned. Look, Peter, Sheila's probably just as worried about her kid as you are. She wants to make a good impression. This child hates me. I can tell. Thank you for calling. I'm sorry that you had to meet me here, but I need my office for another professor. I wanted to return this to you. And to give you this. It's brilliant, Peter. You have typed the whole manuscript. Well, I know time is short for you. It's going to have to be typed sometime if you're going to submit it for publication. Thank you. You know, you were great at the restaurant the other night. Yes, it, uh, it was nice to have Melissa with us. Um, I hope I said nothing to upset her. Oh, no, no. Believe it or not, she treated you better than she treats a lot of my friends. Well, not that there are always men around the house, but... I mean, she's a good kid, but sometimes... I think she's lucky to have you for a mother. snapped back from the store yet. She said she'd be home soon and that I should make you feel at home. Thank you very much. Like, do you want something to eat? Uh, no. Thank you. We don't have any of those snails or anything. What do you call those things? It's got to go. Yeah, those. But Mom made some brownies and they're okay. Well, I'll see you later. Tell me, where are you off to? Um, my friend Tracy's. And what will you do? I don't know. There's not a whole lot, because it's Sunday. What is it that you usually do on Sundays? I see my dad every other weekend, but his weekend is until next week. And what about your mother? Week about sometimes. But she usually has to catch up on her schoolwork. I'm usually alone. I am myself often alone. My family used to be very big, but believe it or not, I'm the only one left. You're the only Kinski? You see this ring? This ring was passed down to me by my father, who got it from his father. And now... I am the only one left. It's really nice. And you see, the stripes are for the crops in our fields, and the stars are so that there may be as many Kinskis as there are stars in the sky. But they're all gone now, huh? Yes. This is all that is left.
Looks like you've won her over. What about the mother? I'm sorry, I can't sleep. You can't seem to do anything tonight, can you? I'm sorry. What is it? Something about Sheila? No, everything is going along fine with Sheila. I should hope so. What does that mean? You're charming, you're handsome. You've taught her everything she knows about your subject. I can't. You squire her around to our favorite restaurants. You're a pretty good catch for someone you found drenched on your doorstep. First of all, she was on my doorstep delivering a very comprehensively written research paper on Russian icons. And secondly, I'm wooing this woman because I can find no one else to marry me on such short notice. Look, Peter, certain things don't change. One of them is we all do what we have to do to get by. The voice of experience. Yes. Either marry her and find a way to live with yourself or go back to Poland. It's that simple. It is not that simple. There is Melissa to consider as well. Oh, come on. Melissa is not part of the problem. She's an 11-year-old girl. Kids are so wrapped up in themselves, they don't even notice adults. My dear, you are hardly an expert on raising children. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mom, I'm all done. Can I go to the arcade? Okay. But you have to make this last until we get there. Okay. You forgot your cookies. <laughs> what are you thinking? About you? What about me? That you're leaving next week? Don't think about it. Listen, there's something that I have to ask you, and I better do it now before I lose my nerve. Do you want to get married? To me? <laughs> I'm surprised, too. I mean, you're looking at a girl that was brought up to expect a white picket fence and happily ever after. And I never thought I'd say this again, but I am just so happy around you. And I feel like I'm growing as a person. And I know that Melissa likes you because we talked about it and this. And the bottom line is that you're going back to Poland next week, and I know you don't want to go. So if we get married, you can stay. And we can see where this relationship is going to go. And if it works out, fine. And if it doesn't, I just... I feel that it will. I may be wrong, but I think it's your turn to say something. I don't deserve you. But if you will have me, I will be most grateful. Oh, I have Peter. something to tell you. Come, I can't wait to tell you. I've just finished having lunch with the head of your department at the university. Now, he's an old friend of my ex-husband's, and we were discussing your immigration difficulties. Judith, and we you decided. Oh, don't interrupt. 
Let me bask in my accomplishment. Now, he agreed with me that the department could use someone with your background to teach full time. So the university will arrange for a permanent visa. Now you can stay and you can torture me with your rapier wit. And we can finally redecorate that dreadful university apartment of yours. That's wonderful, Judith. Peter, don't think this was an easy favor to get. But when I thought of you dragging that child to Disneyland with Shirley and Joe... Sheila. Well, I was moved to superhuman efforts. Yes, you, you did me tremendous favor. Now, to celebrate your stay in America, why don't we take the boat to Catalina? We'll spend a week. And we'll relax and forget about the last three. Yes, I would like that. Peter, that's wonderful. With that position comes a visa to stay here. That's just terrific. Well, now there is no need to, to rush into getting married. No rush? Now I... Now we have plenty of time to think about it. You don't want to get married. Um, could we go into the house for a moment? Lewis is in there. Yes, I, I could explain. Wait, the only reason that you agreed to marry me was so that you could get your visa. Do you believe that? You could look your whole life for what you've got standing right here in front of you. And you're going to throw it all away. 